Welcome to the IVM Podcast Network. TFG Football is an IVM production and you can also check out their other awesome shows like Geek Fruit with fellow and television geek Tejas Jishnu and Dinkar as they discuss the world of science fiction and nerd culture. You're listening to TFG Football. Hello and welcome everyone. This is a new episode of the TFG Indian Football Podcast. Now, if you were listening to us uh, yesterday, uh, we we were talking about all the retentions by ISL teams and talking about how they would uh, be instrumental in the team's upcoming season, and or if they could have. And we discussed that uh, we we pick our players. If you know the players that they've picked up, if not them, then maybe it would have been a better choice. Uh, so yesterday we did four teams. That's Mumbai City, uh, ATK, Chennai NFC, NFC Goa. Today we shall touch upon the other four teams. Uh, Bengaluru FC. We start with them, the new entrant into the ISL. Now they also had a signing, another foreign signing. They did yesterday, Dimas Delgado. Uh, Barcelona B product and he's played among very various other clubs. Uh, just like I mentioned yesterday, we shall talk about the foreign signing a little later. We are we are focusing on the Indian retained players. Now let's start with Bengaluru. Uh, no surprises here. They had to. I'm mean, I'm pretty sure they had to go through a lot of uh, you know list of players. Okay, whom do we keep? Whom do we keep? But the, finally they picked the two right players, two consistent players who've been there for them since the start. Sunil Chetri, their captain, and Udanta Singh, Mr. Flash, Kevin. No surprise. Is there, right? uh, no, it was a difficult choice. Uh, yeah. See, uh, I think Bengaluru has made up a squad uh, in totality. Hmm. They do not have one star player or one single performer. Hmm. It's the team effort. Even if you look at the foreigners, uh, right now we're not talking about the foreigners, hmm. but they built a squad that you know uh, could have you know a replacement coming in. The replacement could have been a better. If if it was you know as in uh, you have one squad that plays regularly and you make one or two changes that second string side again brings you the same kind of performance that the first first team did hmm. so they've they've put in a lot of effort to create this team and for them it's really going to be difficult to get that same performance out of a new hmm. you know totally uh, out of scratch team hmm. so it must have been very uh, uh, you know chaotic in the back end there for them because. They need a Chetri. You yeah. know, Chetri is the most sought out player for India. He's been there for whenever, even uh, when uh, rising to the occasion for Bengaluru FC, not just mm. for the national team. He's done that every time he he's asked for it. Yeah. You no. Know, uh, so that was a clear choice for them. But I, I'm sure he must have demanded some something. You know, it's not easy to keep somebody like Sunil Chetri in your team. Because uh, Mumbai City also would have been just you know uh, trying to get all hands on him, uh, so it must have been a good sum of money that uh, that kept Chunil uh, Chetri at Bengaluru FC. Udanta was a good choice. You know, uh, he is one of the youngest players in the squad who's been getting regular call-ups, mm. and uh, he's also delivered. You know, mm. consistency is there for uh, Udanta, and the best part is he's just twenty-one. Hmm. No, he. They could have gone for. They could have gone for Jingen. They could have gone for uh, Lindo. Lindo was also one of the choices. But then again, age is not on his side. Uh, if you've uh, taken Sunil Chetri on your team and you have a Lindo, it becomes difficult to give Lindo starts. But then Udanta is somebody you know. He gil- delivers whenever he is expected. He delivers, and the combination of Sunil Chetri and uh, Udanta, my God, we've seen them create yeah. wonders. Yeah. So Bengaluru had a tough choice to make. Other than uh, uh, other teams, you know, uh, they had a really difficult time to pick whom they want to keep with, among the Indian players. Hmm. Now, Charanjit, are you on the same page where uh, Kevin made a point that uh, a big sum of amount must have attracted, more not attracted one of the keys yeah, uh, that was, kept Chetri? Well, I'll come to that later. But hmm. first of all, let me just reiterate something. You know, okay. this two player retention thing. Hmm. You know this. This is so obviously the rule was brought in to rob Bengaluru FC. Hmm. Okay, they just it, it just robbed them of their character for now unless they managed to build it back in. Yeah. Because uh, the club grew and found success because they had a good Indian core and they kept it together for three years. Hmm. Okay, that's where the consistency comes from. That's wh- that's how they had the confidence. To go and add some foreigners and make some extra signings and build on what they already had, hmm. 
Hmm. And they knew it would pay off. And that's what, you know, that, that character, that, that consistency is what resulted in them making it to the AFC Cup final. Okay. And you put in this rule that they only can keep two Indian uh, senior players and they have to, you know, forcibly let the others go, even though I'm pretty sure most of the players that were let go wanted to stay in Bengaluru FC and Bengaluru FC wanted to keep them. Hmm. Right? So this was a forcible tearing apart of a family that we witnessed because uh, of this ISL's rule that you have to give up most of your players if you want right. to play here. So even bigger than the franchise fee, this is the price you pay. It's hmm. a footballing price. You know, uh, and, and they have made this compromise. So good luck to them. Uh, and the second thing that baffles me is that Bengaluru FC have never played in ISL before. Hmm. All right. So who are they retaining? Like they they should. I mean, if they have never played in ISL before, then how does the retention term apply to them? Hmm. So okay, uh, uh, Sunil Chetri obviously they were going to keep. You know because uh, he's he's been such an inst- uh, you know, integral part of the team uh, and the direction it has been it has taken. He's he's a true leader. Right. There was no way they were going to let him go. Hmm. Udanta was a tough choice. They kept him as well. So if if uh, Bengaluru FC keeps Udanta and uh, Sunil, how come the term retention applies to uh, Eugene Sandhu at Pune City? He's a Bengaluru FC player who's moving on there. Hmm. So it is this is this entire jumble that uh, that has been created by this rule, but. You know, we can talk about it for hours. So we better just focus on the signings. So the only, uh, you know, interesting, I mean, obviously everybody saw Sunil's retention coming. Yeah. Udanta was a bit of a surprise because, uh, you know, I expected it to be either CK Vinit or Eugene Zalindo, uh, or somebody like that, you know, somebody with more experience. But it's actually a very smart choice because mm. Udanta is an upcoming star, okay? He's a young... He's you know benefited immensely from his association uh, with Bengaluru FC. He's blossomed there. He has uh, become uh, the best so far, and his prime is yet to come. Yeah. So locking him down for uh, three, four years or five years, and ensuring that he you know develops this long-term relationship with the club, mm. that is insurance for them for the next decade probably. Right. You know, there's a good chance that Udanta will play there for years to come. Like. I'm talking 10, 12 years, mm. you know, until his retirement. Mm. If they can make that happen, and Udanta will get better, you know, he will, uh, he will probably reach his peak around uh, when he's uh, 27, 20, 29 year old. So if they show that confidence in him and foster that relationship, that gives them the next big superstar after Sunil Chitri, because Sunil will not be there after three, four, five years. So. This is another show of long-term vision for them. And uh, they have uh, let some others go. And I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm confident that many of these players who have left Bengaluru FC now will go back to Bengaluru FC once this ridiculous rule ends. Hmm. You know, once uh, the whole draft nonsense goes away, the retention... Uh, yeah, once, once, it goes be- away, once it becomes an official the market league, yeah. becomes open. Yeah. All of them will want to go back to Bengaluru FC, mm. and uh, we'll we'll see what happens then. So, this will be a difficult season for Bengaluru FC. Uh, they will have to play with a, a very different team than the one they were used to. The draft is is shitty for you if you are very good at signing players. I mean, it's it's great for you if you're not good at going out and making deals with players. Then you're like, ah, I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna call out a name and that player is mine. He mm. cannot say anything. Mm. But if you are one of the best clubs in the country who is known for giving really good treatment to the players for their professionalism and really developing a player and giving them the best platform to exhibit their talents, it's bad for you because you will be robbed out of some of the best signings that you can make. Right. So that's what is happening with Bengaluru FC. And uh, yeah, we'll see how they go through the season. I think the bigger trouble for Bengaluru FC is not playing in the ISL. It's for the AFC Cup campaign because what they've achieved so far in the tournament is because what they've done in the past two or three years. And that all of a sudden is just put to, to, put to the trash. Mm. You know, there will be, you know, a, a big gap because... 
they they've performed okay they didn't perform excellently in this season uh, i'm talking about the afc campaign they managed to scrape through you know mazia win was actually very close you know they it, one goal here and there could have been different so it's going to be tough for them in the afc cup rather than the as i said it's just nothing but uh, you know it's not even talking about promotion relegation as of now so it's not too competitive because yes there is the afc cup spot that is there up for grabs but then what about the yeah. current afc campaign hmm. Hmm. yeah excellent point because look even if they like whatever players they get from the draft hmm. and they make up something of a squad they will still have like 3 4 months to prepare for isl right right but that afc cup game is coming up like next month it's in august hmm. they will have a new team the coach will have to get acquainted to a whole new slew of players and they will not have the advantage that they had last year going into a difficult knockout stage of afc cup but the players were already there they already had a stable squad now they will have to build that stability within one month like mm. the draft is on 23rd july uh, their first leg match against uh, north korea april 25th sports club that's on 23rd august. august yeah one month 31 days they will have to uh, just build everything up and they will be playing some friendly there and there but this will be the biggest challenge bengaluru yeah. fc have ever faced because yeah. not only because that north korean club is an immensely tough team to beat probably the uh, toughest team bengaluru fc have faced after alcoa aljavia mm. in the afc cup final and they will have such a short time period to just Yeah. get this team going yeah it's going to be incredibly difficult yeah just like uh, to echo the points you know it's going to be a really challenge this will be a real test for bengaluru fc yes they've gained an entry into isl yes they've managed to get the isl or afc cup spot but here's where the challenge begins you have a month's time to rebuild your whole team from the scratch yes you've got two core players yes you are signing some retaining some foreign players you're signing you're on the or you're on the right path but it's not in your hand what happens in the draft system because you really have to fight it out there and because you because bengaluru fc will be in that spot for the very first time we'll have to wait and watch how they regroup and do they show that professionalism that they've been showing in the past 3 4 years here let's see how that works in their favor now moving on we're talking about lindo let's talk about his team uh, the team that has retained him here in isl fc pune city I think it's a jackpot for them to have signed Lindo and the other player that they've gone is with keeper goalkeeper Vishal Keth. How how good or important is this pick for Vishal Keth? Personally, Kevin. Excellent. You know, for uh, a a player who's been called up for the national camp for the very first time and uh, you know, uh, we heard someone saying I can't recall like who even if you're part of the national camp and you don't get selected to the final squad, you gain a lot. Hmm. Now he's done that for his for himself. I think he's also part of the under twenty three squad, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, I'm not sure if he is going to be picked over hmm. there. But again, see, being part of the senior national camp gets you a whole lot of experience, which you might might never get at club level. Hmm. You know, it's a whole level of uh, uh, it's a higher level of coaching there. You know, uh, it's sports science, uh, science that is involved. It's more you know scientific methods that are used. It's an experienced coach along with an assistant that have vast experience it's mm. not club level we're talking about no, countries it's the players the senior yes. players that you get to yes. share the dressing yes. room with so that that is very helpful for him and i hope he does big uh, again just like fc goa i don't have very high hopes from fc pune city whoever the coach might be but uh, good for him to get into the isl uh, uh, let's see that uh, his game time in in the team does not actually uh, bring down uh, is not brought down by the you know not so good performance by the team hmm. because even though if you get a good good team it's never guarantee that you know your progress graph is going to go up hmm. you require that support from the defense you require that support from the midfield else a goalkeeper really can be you know just shadowed down by uh, some really tough op- opponents in the tournament hmm. uh, about lindo you know he's 30 I I'm, I'm a little you know uh, skeptical about his uh, uh, progress over here because he he does not you know get picked so often but he he can deliver hmm. so 
it's fine that he's there in Pune City, but uh, I hope the team is better than what it was last season. We've seen them not not doing so well in the ISL. I hope this is a change for them. Hmm. Siranjit, do you see Habas making good use of Lindo here for this season? Well, I don't really have. I mean, uh, how many have we seen even for Lindo in Pune City? Uh, he's been there uh, two seasons. Uh, I I think. I think at Pune City, Eugene Salingo has played uh, his worst. Mm. Okay, and, and I'm just uh, I'm just being honest here. Uh, I mean, we've seen him uh, in uh, Randagir United. We've seen him in Dajong. We've seen that maiden season with uh, Bengaluru FC, uh, where he scored six goals in the I League mm. uh, and played a big part in them winning Federation Cup. Uh, that, that was that was his best. Uh, ever since then, I I think like. You know, the 2014-15 season, sorry, 2015-16 season, when he was, uh, you know, that that crazy thing was happening. He, uh, in, India was playing, and uh, ISL did not have a uh, you know international break, so mm. he he was uh, just moving back and forth between the ISL uh, team, Pune City, and uh, the national team uh, without any break. That sort of, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, affected his concentration in ISL 2015. Mm. Then he gave, went back to, uh, you know, Bengaluru FC. He did a little bit uh, okay. He, he was, uh, you know, he faced a lot of injuries. I think, uh, you know, part of it was caused by uh, the whole, uh, you know, thing. Uh, I think uh, the the entire hectic schedule that he had to face. Mm. You know, traveling with the Indian team to uh, you know different countries and playing World Cup qualifiers, and then coming back and playing that hectic ISL schedule uh, at Pune City. Right. It kept him action for a while uh, at Bengaluru FC. Then, when uh, last year, uh, last year's ISL, he uh, was with Bengaluru FC for the most of the time because mm. they were still playing in uh, AFC Cup. Mm. And when he went to Pune City, uh, he needed rest. And uh, he he just started for them once, I think. Mm. Right? Mm. He, he played. Uh, he made three appearances, and he started for them once. Yeah. And uh, then he went and had a decent and okayish season for uh, uh, Bengaluru FC. Scored just one goal, assisted quite a few. He's he's been uh, morphing into this uh, supporting role. Yeah. Uh, ever since uh, that 2015-16 early season uh, debacle that he faced. Mm. So. Yeah, he's, he's he looks less aggressive to me. Uh, he uh, is uh, seems like he's trying to keep up with the uh, you know with the pressure that's up there. Uh, he's he's been playing uh, for the national team for a long time, uh, and I, he's he's still an integral part of the national team. But uh, in the in the Asian Cup qualifiers, uh, four matches, he got two yellow cards. I, I've seen him lose uh, lose his head a couple of times. Yeah. Right, uh, and and we've seen we've seen him score such beautiful goals uh, at at club level, like that goal against Johor Darul Tazim yes. uh, away from home uh, last year during the AFC Cup uh, semi finals. Like, where is his goal for the national team? I don't think he scored a single goal hmm. so far yeah. for India. But but yeah, you know, uh, he sees a midfield attacking midfielder. You don't really uh, you know fault him for not scoring every time. Uh, but yeah, he scored one goal uh, in in the last I League season. So you're not the best of shapes that he has been in, and and his his bad time is almost continuing for about a year, hmm. I think. Uh, you know, but but yeah, hope, you know, all the best to him. Hopefully, he recovers. He's got huge star value. He's got connection to the city of Pune. He was uh, studying there, uh, as he has always said. Uh, he's uh, he's a very well known face, and he will pull some crowds. So Pune City did play, uh, did pick them. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's a bit interesting, you know. Somebody who just who was on the bench a total of four times, made three appearances, got one start, uh, has been retained uh, by a uh, by Pune City over all of the Indian players who you know really served them throughout the season. Hmm. Uh, but you know, you know, uh, but that's that's what we're talking about. Regions in India, an undisputed star. Yeah. Uh, and again, I think Pune City got lucky because uh, Bengaluru FC decided to keep Udanta uh, ahead of Regions in India, and that's also another uh, another uh, indication 
of where he is right now as a player. Mm. If if Bengaluru C went ten picked Udanta ahead of uh, Eugen Sundlinto, that that shows a bit. Uh, so yeah, Pune City got lucky to have him back, uh, and uh, hopefully he recovers and plays even better and better because we need him in mm. the Asian Cup. You know, mm. there's, there's still no replacement for him. He he needs to deliver for 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 his club and in the national team. But look at Vishal Kaid. Yeah. Like, okay, he's he's an up and coming goalkeeper. He's just twenty years old, right? Mm. Uh, by the way, his his birthday is like ten days from now, so we'll be uh, we'll have to remember to wish him. Uh, he will be twenty one uh, on twenty second July. At twenty third July is the draft, so busy times ahead of us. Uh, we have uh, this guy who gets retained by an ISL team, right? And Can you take a guess how many ISL matches he has played so far in his career? Less than. Ten days. Kevin, do you want to go for it? He hasn't played. Yeah, he has yeah. played zero matches. <laughs> he has not played an ISL game in his life. Yeah, I think he, he was. He is retained. Yeah, I think he so, was rose. Now, he rose to fame. He rose to fame because of his yeah. performance at Shillong Lajong, right? Yeah, he's he's a, he's a uh, he was in Pune FC uh, academy, I think before beforehand. Then he got loaned out to Shillong Lajong back mm. in 2014. Uh, first season he just played one game, I think. Uh, yeah, last season was his best. Then yeah, 2015-16 onwards, he was the number one keeper mm. at Shillong Lajong, and he was awesome. Yeah, like Shillong Lajong's graph has gone up with him uh, in, in the uh, under the uh, bar, mm. and it has been so great for to see him just develop and. He, Imagine being a uh, you know being a first choice keeper at the top division when you are 19. Hmm. Like keepers, keepers reach their prime when they're 30, 31, 32. Yeah. Right. It it shows with experience. Such a young player who's who's uh, starting every week and uh, playing at the highest level and uh, delivering. Right. And it's not very easy to be the keeper for Shillong Lajong because uh, uh, you know all the big teams come and hammer a team like Shillong Lajong, a young team. Hmm. But he, uh, you know, withstood it. That's why he landed that Pune City contract last season. He did not get to play. He, I think, he was in the bench just uh, a total number of two times. Hmm. You know, but his uh, actual, uh, what do you call it? His actual evaluation was done by the Indian national team. Okay, they knew he was. You know, Shilong Lajong gave him the proper platform to perform, and he delivered for them. So he uh, got into the bench uh, in one game, I think, uh, recently. Uh, that was the Kyrgyzstan game. Well, uh, on the bench for mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, he is there for an under twenty three team. So he is a future prospect. You know, uh, uh, good thing Singh Sandhu is what twenty three, twenty four right now. Yeah. Right, and this guy, this guy is. Probably one of his successes for a few years, mm. you know, at the national team. So, uh, you know, the, the Stephen Constantine has his math correct. You know, as long as you have the two established names, good pitching Sandhu and uh, uh, Subodh Paul, you need to you know groom somebody who's got a few years on them, yeah. so that he can uh, you know gain some experience and step up when they step off. So, he, I think, Vishal Kaith is one of the main. Prospects for the national team in that sense, mm. and that's that's what has been recognized. So I I, I don't know I, I you know uh, maybe it will sound like I'm judging ISL, but but look at how your performance in ISL means so little when you are landing a contract in ISL. Everybody is looking at I League. Everybody is looking at our national team. Yeah. Okay. You know maybe that will change now. Maybe uh, you know in future young players will be judged. Purely by their performance in ISL, when when ISL becomes a platform mm. uh, that is capable of really bringing forth young players, so yeah. No, uh, well, let's move on. We have two more teams to look at, and I think the next one would be Kerala Blasters. I think this team has clearly, you know, picked up the two strongest players of theirs. Uh, one that has been there since the inception, and actually literally rose to the occasion uh, because of his performance. And from then on, he was a star wherever he went. And then the other one, of course, the local flavor, uh, the crowd puller. I think two. I think this is the two best signings. However, it would uh, translate into action and into play. We'll have to wait and see. But I would say these two are the big pick that Kerala Blasters could do, and they have done it. So, Charanjit, what do you have to say about it? 
CK Vineet and Sandesh Jingan. Yeah, well, uh, two Bengaluru FC players going to Kerala Masters, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> KBFC wrong being BFC, but obviously not. Uh, both CK Vineet but the and, other uh, side, oh, uh, that will only be up, that will only apply done. for uh, CK Vineet. Jingan was part of a uh, Kerala Blasters since 2014, exactly. and then Bengaluru. Exactly, Bengaluru. and and uh, Sandesh Jingan is. Easily the original ISL superstar. Yes. Okay. Uh, I mean, he's been there. Uh, he played for United Second Mumbai FC. We've yeah. seen him do some real uh, great work. Yeah. But again, those are fringe clubs. Mm. And uh, when you're playing for uh, clubs like them, you know, uh, uh, teams that usually finish on the bottom half of the league table, mm. and you're a defender. You don't. Your performance does not shine through. Right. You know. Right. You you uh, because even though you are great. The defensive unit is not that good, mm. and your team concedes a lot of goals. Mm. So, you know, you get suppressed in that way. You know, there are there are not many, not much room for an individual talent to shine through. But Sandeep Singh and got that first in Kerala Blasters when he went there, yeah. and that's why it was so awesome. Finally, he had a good team. Finally, he had uh, that chance to express himself, and he and he loved that crowd back mm. back up. Uh, and uh, they loved him. He loved them back. And you know, the new star was born, and he's now the icon. You see, if you want to talk about one icon from Kerala Masters, yeah, that's him. Hmm. You know, the Indian marquee player. Hmm. So yeah, he uh, rose to the national team as well. Hmm. And uh, yeah, he's. He, I, I see him there for the next ten years. Hmm. That, that's how awesome he is at Kerala Blasters. Uh, Bangalore FC, yeah, he got a good experience. Uh, he got to play in AFC Cup. Uh, that was the first time he played in the international level for a club team. Mm. Uh, he's been pretty good uh, for the national team as well. His game is getting better and better. Uh, reckless, uh, though he is, uh, you know, does not really care for his own health and goes into those nasty tackles. Mm. Uh, and every time he does that, uh, I almost get a heart attack. But <laughs> yeah, it's it's great to see him. Put everything on the line, and uh, he deserves it. Yeah. He probably shouldn't. Uh, I mean, isn't he the uh, highest Indian player right now? Hmm. Yeah, I think. I think right now. I mean, uh, maybe, maybe that will get overtaken soon by some other signing. But uh, right now, he is. Uh, I think the uh, highest paid, and he yeah. deserves that. Yeah. He, he earned it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a jackpot for Kerala Blasters. And CK Vineet, obviously, CK Vineet. Yeah. Uh, again, the same thing about Eugene Salinda. If Bengaluru FC could keep him. They would keep him, and uh, CK Vineet would stay at Bengaluru FC. There's no doubt in my mind about it. But mm. yeah, he's at Kerala Blasters. He's been there for the last two years. Mm. Uh, has been benched a lot, like played some eight nine games uh, each season. Uh, but whenever he was, he has been there, he was uh, beautiful. You know, the, yeah. the the local boy, the way he delivered and the way he stepped up was awesome. Mm. How I mean, many goals for them? Like. First season he didn't score any goals. Uh, Second season, like season. yeah, he scored almost five to six goals. goals. Yeah, five goals. So yeah, he will be right at home. Yeah, uh, literally. And then so, yeah. coming after the AFC campaign, he had hardly any matches, and he made a he made a mark. So I'm pretty sure Kerala Blasters will look at these two as. I think big if stars. Uh, Bengaluru FC had uh, a choice of retaining four players, <laughs> these two would have been the next two. Mm. You know, easily the best choice, and uh, what a what a season uh, uh, Jingan has had. You know what an effect he's got. No, uh, Kevin, I would like to counter by saying that uh, uh, probably Sandeep Jingan would have preferred to be at Kerala Blasters because that's that's pretty much his club now, and uh, they would have kept Eugene Salindo instead. Hmm, could be, could be, right, right, right. So uh, an AFI product, Jingan, uh, he's just turning out to be one of the best defenders that India has produced, and uh, what maturity does does he show at? You know, even the toughest of uh, the games. You you see his performance against Kyrgyz Republic. Mm. He was outstanding. You know, mm. yeah. I can just uh, get those images where he just thrown himself in front of the ball, not knowing wh- whether he's going to you know just walk up straight after that tackle or no. Yeah. He just puts his entire don't, body in front of the ball. Don't forget, just, though it was friendly match against Nepal. You know what he did, right? I mean, his goal was. God, <laughs> you know, you know. I have played as a defender. I know how tough it yeah. is to just you know earn that name for yourself. If your team is going 
going to go down hmm. going down badly but he is one man army you know he'll just let everything go in that one tackle he will not care if he's able to do the next tackle or no hmm. you know that bad as he is and ck when you know he is a crowd favorite at kerala blasters soon he's going to be called called a legend just like how meta busen was called at east bengal i'm sure he's just one you know one season no one one or two seasons short he's just uh, maybe we can see some uh, statue unveiled of ck when he's <laughs> somewhere in the kerala blasters camp somewhere yeah Well, uh, interesting signings here, and the final team that we'll be looking at is the North East United FC, the team that was last to announce their signings, and uh, they've gone ahead for two young players, but two young and upcoming, and already earned their name in the big books of uh, Indian football: Roland Bojers and Rene Stipe. Kevin, did you have any surprises here? Ah, uh, Bojers was had to be picked. You know, uh, no, no other better player uh, for for the Indian side. Uh, yes, we talked about uh, this earlier as well. Uh, Subrat the Paul would have been a better choice uh, mm. ahead of Rehnesh, but then all these things that are going around uh, his career about the doping scandal. Uh, but uh, uh, great that to uh, great to see him all to be all cleared of the, uh, the charges and uh, he's all clean. but uh, rene stp his his uh, experience at east bengal has earned him this hmm. and no better choice than uh, you know we've seen that trend goalkeepers had to be picked at least uh, most of the teams have been doing so pojes is that upcoming little star yeah. you know that defensive midfielder yeah <laughs> chiranjit yeah obviously yeah. we talked about this in the previous episode yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, that uh, yeah i would have actually hoped to see one north eastern player getting a uh, retention hmm. uh, at north east united but yeah they went with the experience they went with the uh, star name the promise and in that way roland bojes and rene stp both a solid signings hmm. uh, you want to keep keep hold of your goalkeeper because uh, you know you can't take a chance on that you can take a chance on the defender hmm. like okay let's go to the draft we'll see who who we get okay there will be somebody uh you can take a chance on like a winger position or a, or a side uh, you know one of the midfielders or whatever it is but you can't really take a chance on goalkeeper that's why you we have seen so many goalkeepers getting retained yeah you know you want that stability you want that security so yeah that has happened with rene stp and he deserves it he's mm. uh, uh, he's been awesome for north east united so far yeah. uh, he's uh, uh the presence has been immense mm. and even though north east united have not made it to the semi finals yet uh, it, it it has they been close last season ball. it's been yeah. uh, the defense as a whole so yeah he has served the club now the club is uh, you know recognizing that by like giving him a, a extended contract which is awesome uh, rolling bojes you know i would have loved to see him play for fc goa mm. okay it is just meant to be at some point uh it came out of uh, sporting club de goa um, he is a typical goan boy he has done so well for the national team a uh, proper superstar uh, he's going to get even bigger as he gains more experience uh, another great signing in terms of talent and promise no no complaint mm. you know not as united went with the best that they could have yeah. so yeah great for them Yeah, well, now that brings us to the end of the you know the retention players. We already mentioned about Delhi Dynamo, so we don't want to discuss any much further and waste our time because they are not interested. So why are we? We aren't interested either. <laughs> Let's and no wait. news about the ghost team. Yeah, actually, they st- they still remain as the ghost team. So probably you never know when we are approaching, when we are nearing the dates of the draft system, then we will know. Okay, this team has come up. Oh, <laughs> you know. So let's see how that goes about, and uh, we will continue talking about Indian football, about of course about the signings. the other various news from indian football we will let you know and if you're listening to us on youtube like share subscribe and hit hit the bell icon to get updates of our new episode you can also listen to us on audio boom soundcloud itunes and various other podcasting apps download the ivm podcast app and uh, follow the tfg football twitter handle where you get updates about everything indian football and you can also read all these stories on our website thefangarage.com have a great day folks you can also talk to us directly sharanjit oja boza underscore kevin sujit matthew 94 those are our respected twitter handles have a great day come back to us tomorrow because we're a daily show enjoy it the 
That was Tantrik Steve from Hansraj College, Delhi, performing at IIT Bombay's Mood Indigo. Just like them, there's a lot of new talent and art coming out of colleges all across India. But unfortunately, most of this goes completely unnoticed or ignored. To fix this, we started ATKT.in. Hi, I'm Ankur. I'm a musician and a rapper. And I found that one of the best things about being an artist myself is finding new talent. Through ATKT.in, Tanya, my colleague who's a dancer, and our whole team really is putting all of our efforts into discovering and promoting all the coolest talent that's coming out of colleges all across India. And this goes up on our website, our social media, TV, radio, and now of course, this podcast with IVM. Make sure you go to our website, support the talent with your likes, your shares, your comments, all of that really matters. Go ahead, check it out. ATKT.in Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Sorry to say, but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun. As you can see, there's death, destruction and chaos taking place all around us. But don't you worry, food and drinks will be served shortly and I would recommend checking out IVM Podcasts to get some of your favorite Indian podcasts. We'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over. Thank you.